the ULA Congress and I'm here today with a familiar face. I'm here with Dr. Mikhail Protopopov and he's not here in his capacity as a ULA TV reporter. Instead, he's going to talk to us about his work on the differences between skin psoriasis and axial spondyloarthritis. So, can you tell us, Mikhail, why is this important? So it is well known that the skin psoriasis is, is one of the most common extra-articular manifestations of the axial spondyl arthritis, or it actually depends the way you look at it. Uh, the dermatologist would say that the axial involvement is one of the most common manifestations of the skin psoriasis, and it is presumed that those patients with a combination of the skin psoriasis and, and an axial disease can have a different phenotype and a different speed of the radiographic progression of the axial involvement compared to the just normal patients with the axial spondyl arthritis. So we actually tried to look at those differences using the data set from the GESPI cohort, which is, which is the German inception cohort, including the patients with the early axial spondyl arthritis, both with radiographic and non-radiographic axial spondyl arthritis. So we had a subset of 210 patients, including 28 patients with the skin psoriasis, and explored the differences between those patients. And actually, we can say now that although we observed several phenotypical differences, which are easily explainable, for example, patients with the psoriasis, they had higher chance on being on the DMART therapy, which is logical, and uh, also had higher uh, prevalence of the peripheral arthritis, which is also logical. Uh, but what is important that we didn't find any significant difference in terms of the radiographic progression between those two groups. So it seems to be that no matter whether you have skin psoriasis or you doesn't, it is the axial disease that drives the progression. We presume that probably we were not just powered enough to show this difference because if you will look at those graphs, they do not actually significantly different from each other, but you can see that in the group of the psoriasis, numerically, the speed of the progression, at least in the spine, uh, on the different outcomes was a little bit higher compared to the uh, group of the patients with no psoriasis, but not statistical significance. So we are planning to repeat this analysis using the data not from the two years, but from the 10 years of the whole database, and using not a small subset of the database, but the whole database, and we will probably, presumably, will be able to present those data on the next ULR. So Mikhail, if you're going to look at 10 years next, do you think you'll find a difference or do you think the results will be similar? I cannot predict this, but I presume if we are speaking about the certain differences between the uh, axial involvement with and without the psoriasis, it is likely that the small difference will, can be found. Thank you so much again for speaking with me today, Dr. Mikhail Protopopov. Uh -huh.